I'd like to do a Shinkarian analysis of a piece by Mozart. It's just the opening phrase, really. Um, I'm going to start on the score making some marks to show phrase model things, uh, in other words, having to do with harmonic function. And then we'll move to a, a separate sheet of paper and create a middle, well, let's do the foreground first and then we'll do the middle ground sketch. Um, so let's start with the piece. This is Mozart, Kershaw 283, the opening phrase. I think it's 10 bars. Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, well, there's my <laughs> measure 10. So it is 10 bars. Um, let's start, as I said, with that phrase model idea. We're in G major. We're starting on our tonic. And we're getting back to tonic here. I really like to use the bass to help me to see what the what the basic lie of the land lay of the land is and I'm ignoring a lot of notes when I do that because these this is really a chord arpeggiated using something kind of like Alberti bass it's presenting the chord out over time and just the lowest note is my concern if I'm tracking bass notes I want G A F sharp and G. You can see the embellishing motion. If you like to think of it as two incomplete neighbors, that works. A is an incomplete neighbor to the G. F sharp as an incomplete neighbor to the second G. Or you can view the whole thing, and I'll use a slur here and kind of go Shinkarian already, and show both working together to form a double neighbor pattern. We've got 5, 4, 3, changing to 5, 6, 5, back to 1. That means tonic is expanded through those bars using that double neighbor pattern. These together form a double neighbor pattern, embellishing my opening tonic. Um, let me just take that chunk, that first four measures, and now move to the top part. So you can see how this interpretation influences what I'm going to do as I treat these notes up above. I'm going to choose this as my main note in the top part. Not this D, even though they're, they are the same in a sense. In fact, I can slur them all together. They're basically tonic triad played out over some time. And I'm choosing this D instead of that as my main note. It's true, this has pride of place in that it's first. But the, the second of those two Ds is special because it lands on a downbeat. It has uh, weight because of its metrical placement. That's why I'm picking it. It also coincides here with the, the harmonic support. You can think of that as maybe an anticipation kind of a thing. Now, what I really want to do when I'm thinking in a, with a Shankarian pair of ears is I, I really want to take a very jagged melody, one that's a compound melody, and parse it out into its component melodies. I can see these two notes. I can consider them to be inner voice notes, and these to be way up above. Those are called covering tones when they're up higher than the main line is going to be. I already know that this is going to be my what's called the Kopf tone, the place that I start from when I start looking for uh, descending motion. Um, and so I want to be in that register for my main melody. And we return to that register here. I want to connect these notes back to this one, relate them to one another. This is the note that returns us to the tonic. Scale degree 5, moving to scale degree 3. I'm going to connect those to show that they're related to one another. They belong to this tonic chord that's being stretched out, expanded for these four bars. Then um, this becomes significant. This C as a passing tone moving between them. It's the one note that I'm picking from this big five chord, five se dominant seventh chord here, as the one note that belongs to this main melody line here. 
Notice how this tonic expansion line works together with this slur, which shows that these notes belong together, and that those two in turn work in tandem with this slur to show that all of this is expressing tonic for four bars. And it, not only that, but we're showing how the that chord is elaborated, passing motion up top and by double neighboring motion down below. Okay, let's go further with our our phrase model harmonic function analysis and then see what that gets us. Here's a four chord going to a one six. So that is not a predominant four, it's a plagal type four. Um, it's also, because of this relationship here, stepwise connection to the 1-6, um, this chord is, is less stable than the 1 and moves to it by step. Notice that you had to leap to get there. G up to a C and then down to the B. That means we really have two possibilities. We could write plagal under there. Uh, better yet, I think, would be neighbor, so I would use that. And that means we're embellishing tonic still further, all the way through that far, at least. Okay, and let's go further. Here are a pair of five chords. Um, this one, uh, you're, you're missing the leading tone, so it's incomplete. But you can see that it's implying 5, 4, 3, D, F sharp, A, 5, 6, back to 1. In the middle here, you've got a one chord. Okay, let's get a few more chord symbols. Four, six, five. Notice this. Two beats, two beats long, two beats long. Before I go on, let me just show. Potential six, four. You can see the sixth above the bass moving down. The fourth above the bass moving down and because that fourth above the bass is doubled here with the fifth note I, I say fifth note because you got D another D G and B Th just the notes there would be enough to give us four part harmony but you've also got this G and that fifth voice uh, doubles has to double something and it's doubling the G here um, so uh, an awkward doubling if you were just with four, but you're dealing with five voices, and that's when you tend to get these more unusual doublings cropping up. Um, so just all that to say, this is a cadential 6-4, and these notes all resolve as they should, but this one does, and it leaps up to give us the seventh. Okay, now I'm past that bit of detail work. Let's go back to this, the pacing of the chords. You're going very fast here. You're going slower back here. So thus far, the norm has been one chord per measure. Sometimes three. In that, in that one instance, we've got three chords in a bar. And look at this. We've got three chords, but spread out over two. We might expect two chords in two measures, but to get three is awkward. And Well, not so awkward. It's, it's interesting. It's neat. It captures our interest because it creates what we call a hemiola three things are occurring where, within a span in which we'd expect two. Three in the place of two, that's hemiola. And notice how it fights against this bar line, because this four-six chord is going to last for two beats and cross that bar, and the next chord change is going to be in a fairly weak place, beat, beat two. And then we're back on track on the downbeat with our one. Okay, now we're after the functions of these chords. And you, you've got some options in this measure, and I'd like to look at both. One option is to say, okay, we're moving through a passing chord here, back to tonic and root position. Then a neighboring chord to get us back to yet another tonic and root position. So three, two, one, sev, one. That's putting all the emphasis on the one because we think, hey, those are stable. Tonic chords in root position, both very stable. So let's view these as embellishing. But there is another another way to to hear this and that is to say I hear five in this measure getting to one in the next. 
that makes this one chord in the middle here passing. That's the one I'm going to pick. Actually, I need to just keep going with this one. Let me show this on two at two levels. Here's here is a is a dominant. You know what? I really almost have to go to a Shankarian viewpoint to just show you what I mean by that. So let me do it on a, on another piece of paper right here. And I'm just going to isolate this little spot for the moment. So here's my scale degree 3. Let me make it a complete measure. And then we'll get this coming down. I'm going to leave off duration so I can really use my symbols to show uh, the meaning and function of these different notes. Okay, so what I want to show first of all is that this is basically a 5-4-3 chord because of metrical placement. The 5-4-3 is on the strong beat. The 1 is on a weaker position and it's sandwiched between these flanking chords. You can hear the passing motion in that. 3-2-1-7-1. So it's 3-2-1-7-1. Emphasis on the 3, the 2, the 1. And this not getting a whole lot of emphasis at all because we're moving through it. So that's basically 5 changing from a 5-4-3 to a 5-6 in that measure. I'm going to stem the A to show that it is the, the primary chord in that measure and everything else is derived from it. You start with that note and you can drive the passage by a chordal leap filled in with passing motion. Now step back a little bit and we say we're starting on a 1-6 chord and we're getting back to that one chord now in root position. And so the pattern, again I'm not using these symbols now because I just want to think not of duration but of structural significance. I'm going to write this big slur to show that it goes 3, 2, 1 overall. And now the A here is a passing tone, making this a passing chord within a tonic expansion. So this is a passing 5, 4, 3. Yes, it's elaborated, but it's still passing on our way to the root position one that occurs here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for this spot here when we get to it. I'm going to therefore view tonic as being expanded all the way through this one there. Um, for symbols then, I took care of that. This would be viewed as passing and I would want to show maybe another level up here to show that it too is a passing event. Okay, then I get to my predominant chord, my dominant. This is a cadential 6-4, hoping to expand that dominant in my final tonic. Long tonic, short predominant, dominant tonic. Uh, 